What's the future gonna look like? All right. Well, it's really good to be back again, and I was just reminiscing this morning about the 2018 Up Summit when I was here, and every year what we've done is we've simply told the story of what we've done over the last year of the company, and over time it's created kind of a, I don't know, a sequel of, of things to build an aerospace company, and at the time I described eight people who designed, built, and flew a 4,000-pound vertical takeoff and landing airplane, and at the end of it was grabbed actually by Stuart Walton, and he made a, a trusting investment in our company, along with a number of other people. And, uh, and, and that was really a turning point and a catalyst for us. And at the end of that pitch, I showed a sketch of the airplane that you see out here. So last year, showed up at the Up Summit, and in January of last year, we got a certificate of occupancy of our production facility. And our goal was within the year to produce an aircraft out of the production facility that we opened in January, and we did that. And so I left the Up Summit saying that we were going to go and build our first production CTOL aircraft, conventional takeoff and landing aircraft. So this production facility isn't like just a regular, a regular building. It has Class A clean rooms, it has all the power infrastructure that we need to, 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 to test all the motors, the batteries, the safety infrastructure, and flow airplanes directly out onto the Burlington International Airport and fly them away. We set a goal, we do this every 84 days within the company, we set an audacious goal, and we all get behind it. Our goal was to fly our first production aircraft by November 11th, and we did that. And this is that morning, 5 a.m. in the morning, the whole company showed up, and I had the pleasure of getting inside an airplane. And by the way, if there's a dramatic pause, it's not <laughs> dramatic, it's because I just realized something dumb that I said. I'm gonna go forward from there. Of getting in an airplane that was created by all the people on the ground. We make our own computers. We, we, you, we buy copper steel magnets and we make the motors. We make all the bits and bobs of the airplane and they all have to converge at the same place at the same time with the appropriate level of quality and perfection to go and fly the aircraft in the air. And this is images from that actual flight on November 11th. And I remember getting up, climbed I think it was to 5,000 feet, pointed west, the Adirondacks are lit up, and you've, it's just an amazing feeling to be in a machine that didn't exist earlier that year, that was made by the people on the ground. Perfect, where's Jim Inslee? Is he here? Where's the guy I took flying? There he is. How was the flight this morning? Smooth as silk. It was awesome. He came up to me yesterday, introduced himself. He said, I want to fly that airplane. I said, good, meet me here just, after, just before 7 o'clock, we'll go flying. We did this over the Ozarks. It felt the same because he had the same reaction. High wing loading, electric, air, electric motor, flying over the Ozarks out here this morning, perfectly smooth, landing the airplane, taxiing back in, and everybody just kind of stood on the ramp looking at me. And I'm like you guys can come over to your airplane now and we can have a little party. And we celebrated for about an hour and then we set our next quarterly goal. And our next quarterly goal was interesting. It was different than we had planned. And, and, and eight years ago, Martine Rothblatt and I laid out eight years of quarterly goals to build an aerospace company. And we inserted a few here and there. Well, we inserted one, interestingly enough, for February of last year, or this year, excuse me, which was to build an airplane for less than we sell it for. These goals are not complicated, right? Go fly an airplane, build it for less than you can sell it for. So we went into this like kind of left turn. We said, we, we're not gonna be economically viable unless we do this. So this is interesting, perfect timing. That's a bonded wing, just about 270 parts in that wing. The wing that we had flown with before had over 500 parts and 14,000 fasteners. We got rid of all the fasteners, except for ones that hold on the leading edge for de-icing and stuff, but Never mind those fasteners, the primary structure gone of fasteners. We went from six weeks to a build to four days. We cut the parts in half, we lowered the weight by 18 pounds, and we increased the strength and stiffness. We inserted a goal, and it, it was a major part in getting the cost reduction that we needed. And then we set our next goal. We were gonna show up in Paris and Oshkosh, and we were gonna fly our airplane into those air shows. Now, this is one of the few times in beta where my dumb ideas 
got squashed by the board. I wanted to fly across the Atlantic. And I think I said that to this team. And, uh, and I got looked at a little bit squirrely-eyed. And what we had done is we had taken a diesel reciprocating engine, attached a hybrid generator for it, to it, put it in the cargo bay of the airplane, and went and flown it. And we showed that this thing could go nearly 3,000 miles. Fascinating, right? Well, the next logical thing to do is to fly over the North Atlantic with it. And people are like, eh, no, maybe not. So what we did is we shipped it to Ireland. We flew it across the North Sea. We flew it across the English Channel. We flew over Stonehenge. We showed up in Paris. Meanwhile, back home, our goal for August, which was already charted, was to take our first vertical takeoff and landing aircraft off the production line. So we did the same thing over again, but only on a subset of the airplane. This is the thematic kind of thing that's aligned with our certification strategy, our market entry strategy, which is do a thing that can be built upon, approve, then improve, for example. In this case, we took our CTOL aircraft as planned, and we added the lift motors. We have to lift motors, the lift propellers, and we did it in a production way, which means that all the parts had to be made at a very high quality standard, all the work instructions are following, all the inspections are followed, just like we're building a T-seed aircraft. And that's the way we expose the issues, because we make a lot of mistakes and we have to go backwards and fix those as we go. So it takes time to do it right. But the team did that. And uh, August 11th was coming up real quick. And I just told the story to one of our partners that I'll talk about later, where they said, uh, we need the motors X number of months beforehand. And I said, well, we delivered ourselves our motors four days before our promise of airworthiness. Put them in the airplane, we, flew, we got our airworthiness certificate, and then four days after that, we were in the air flying. Now, that didn't come for free. It wasn't by chance. It was because we did truck testing. We did wind tunnel testing. We built analytical models. And in every one of those steps, we just endeavored to find the errors, endeavored to find the errors and fix those errors so that when we got to the point of putting a butt in the seat and going flying, we were very, very confident that the, the system was going to close. It was going to do the thing that we asked it to do. And sure enough, it did. So here's the, the lift motors going in. And you can actually go over and see these over at our booth here. We've got our pusher motors, our lift motors. The lift motors have double the number of motors inside the motors. They have four independent segments, three-phase inverters, and the pusher only has two. And that's to achieve the reliability requirements to pick this thing up in the air. Now, there's a couple other nuanced changes from the prototypes that you guys saw in the prior year's videos and this one. And they were all hard-earned lessons in aerodynamics, in structures, in mechanics that all have to work together at the same time to fly an aircraft vertically. We shortened the booms, we changed a couple angles, we changed a couple all other angles. And when I had the chance to get in that airplane and fly it, found the control harmony that we were seeking. And it turns out that math works. It's a pretty amazing thing. And it, it was magical. Here we are in Utah with the governor, flying out there. And, and here's another, one of our goals last year, thematically through the whole year, this year, excuse me, was just to simply show up. I have a mentor, Chuck Davis, who said 90% of the job is just showing up. Show up early, work hard, stay late. Whatever happens in between is just a product of what you did to prepare for it. Showing up, show up in Utah, fly with UPS. Show up at Edwards Air Force Base, fly with a bunch of different test pilots out there. Show up at Amazon places in Texas. Show up in, in, uh, in, uh, Florida with Jeff Bezos, like just show up. That's what we did here today. And, and by the way, I want to make one excuse. I heard a lot of people give me crap about our takeoff roll yesterday. Um, it was a long roll. It's because we got 3,000 pounds of batteries in there. Um, and we got our passenger configuration. We got 260 pound fat ass in the front. So it's a heavy airplane today. And, uh, and so it's got a long takeoff roll. But it's a choice I made to be able to fly that airplane from Vermont to here to carry a lot of energy. Right? When we went to Paris, by the way, we brought it down to just a couple batteries. It was taken off like this. Right? You take a couple thousand pounds out of an airplane, again, math works. Right? So sorry for the takeoff roll for all you were giving me hell for it, but come and fly in it and maybe you'll come around. So here, this is fascinating. We got this call from the New York Port Authority and they said, we want to fly into JFK Airport. And we inserted that goal into last year. We got a market survey ticket. We worked with the Port Authority, worked with the airport picked up people in the Hamptons. And by the way, I'd been flying these things all around New York a little bit beforehand because I'd been showing up to investor meetings in our airplane because inevitably some jackass says, did you fly your own plane here? I'm like, yep, I did. And it kind of shuts them up real quick. 
So this wasn't the first flight as it was reported, but it was an awesome flight. So one of the cool things, flying from the Hamptons into JFK, they put me onto an overlaid approach with the jets, and they said, can you hold 130 knots? We've got traffic behind you, no problem. Fly in at 130 knots, set the thing down, the controllers were awesome, all the guys mowing the lawn all, all, all came up next to, the, next, to the, next to the strip as we're landing, and the, the CEO of, uh, of um, Republic Airlines and the CEO of Blade, we gave him a ride just before they sold to Joby, which was a little bit weird, but we did, and, and, and a couple other people that were within the company um, who helped create the day happen. And that's, that was really important to me. The thing that blew people away is while I was flying in, I'm like, okay, well, how much energy we're using? We're going at 120 kilowatts, it's a 40 minute flight, this is how much this energy costs in this region. Hey, by the way, everybody, that costs $7 of electricity to make that flight. And that's what like, went in the New York Post, which I was like, hey, we just flew, and they're like, no, economics, more important. $7 of electricity, you've rendered the recurring cost of operation almost irrelevant. Uh, then we delivered this aircraft we flew into Paris up to Norway. Another cool story, I was at a soccer game with my kids last weekend, and some guy came up to me and he holds his phone and he says, hey, looks like Norway's kicking your ass in electric airplanes. And I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, I read this thing in, in, the, Washington, or in, uh, in the New York Times, and, uh, and he's showing me and it's all this story, and I said, look closely at that airplane. And the tail number on that is 214 Bravo Tango. And the guys on the final put my birthday, Jane, or February 14th, beta technologies on the airplane. He said, that happens to me at birthday. Isn't that ironic? He's looking at me funny. He said, BT, beta technologies. He goes, that's our airplane, man. They're not kicking our ass. In fact, they're using our technology over in Norway. And now down in New Zealand and all over the, all over the world. Um, this is fun, flying into uh, Las Vegas at night, IFR, flying into Atlanta Hartsfield, crossing four runways, dropping into an approach. This is real flying, exposing the issues, flying at night, in the weather, in the smoke. When I was flying to one of the investor meetings in, uh, in uh, Baltimore, took off out of Burlington and the Canadian wildfires, it was solid IFR. And I'm flying through the smoke out there just reminding myself that real aviation requires that. We showed up in Paris, the, the reception was spectacular. This has done wonders for our business, just showing up. Showing that the real airplanes can fly and then Oshkosh, and this was special for me. Um, I've, I had a good friend, and I won't get into it, who said, you, an airplane's not an airplane until it flies into Oshkosh. And, and this is something that, we, and unfortunately he passed away. And, and so I was like, we have to fly into Oshkosh. And we took a couple airplanes into Oshkosh. And flying over the Ozarks, flying first flight was great, but when the air boss called me and he said, the airspace is yours, and I came in from the west, and you drop down and there's 150,000 people sitting there. And these aren't regular people. These are people like you who just love aviation. And you're dropping in, looking at them, looking up at you. And I get a chill thinking about it right now. And you drop in and you come around and you look to the right and there's just this wall of people who love innovation, love aviation, and they're there with you. The last part I'll talk about is we've been working hard to keep our promise of delivering the CTOL aircraft and the VTOL production aircraft, certifying in that sequence. We ended up in partnership with our friends at Hartzell getting the first major TC in this industry type certification for a propeller after doing the flight testing, negotiating the rules, getting the type certification. Awesome company to work with. We learned a ton from them. We're doing the same thing on the engine. And just recently, we partnered with another company, a few companies, but one I'll, I'll mention, GE, General Electric, um, and we're excited to learn a ton from them. So we're working on a turbo generator program that will make that airplane right there, um, if the math works again and it has a history of working. Uh, and this is a big mind bend for me, and I think this whole industry is, historically, we've gone to the military and said, hey, remember all those flights we did over sensors and seekers? We did these acoustic measurements, it's lower maintenance cost, has high dispatch rate. All these things are kind of, they're quantifiable, but they're really qualitative advantages. And, um, and when we add a turbo generator to this airplane, it will simply go faster and further than a helicopter. Because math works, lift over drag ratio 15, 16, 17 on this, depending on the configuration, helicopter lift over drag ratio four. Every unit of energy you put into the airplane, you get four times as much out of it. So if we want a tactical advantage as the United States over an adversary, let's go faster and further. 
then we'll just count the benefit of low maintenance, quiet, low thermal signature later. And so I'm super excited about this partnership with GE going forward because that's the type of thing that innovation at the right time, we have to have a safe, reliable electric aircraft adding hybrid on top of it that we need to do to, to keep the lead in aerospace. So that was last year's update. Thank you for listening. I appreciate it. I appreciate all you guys, by the way, who have supported us from the very beginning. The future is going to be awesome.